this week we are talking with Brad Gruen. Brad is a teacher in Illinois. Uh, he has uh, just one of, been one of my good friends for a long time, and he is talking with us about faith in uncertain times and how to um, trust God when things just aren't working out, um, when they don't go according to plan. And so uh, I hope you guys will listen or watch, and I hope you guys will get something out of this. So thank you all so much. We'll talk to you all later. All right. We are here with Brad Gruen. Brad has uh, been one of my best friends for, golly, almost 25 years, something like that now. It's ridiculous. Um, for sure Brad, we're old. <laughs> say what? We're getting old. We're getting old. Um, Brad is a, is a teacher an educator. Um, he's, he's been involved in youth ministry and FCA ministry, and he is a dad and a husband. And so um, just so excited to have you here, Brad. Brad, could you just tell us just a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Hey, thanks for honoring me, Herschel. Um, you, out of anybody, would know that I'm not a perfect person, and <laughs> I've had my own struggles, you know, through the years, but God's blessed me and my family. And so I'm excited just to share my story a little bit and just a couple things, you know, about trusting in God. And um, I am, like you said, I'm a teacher. Uh, I teach high school math and I teach geometry and calculus and statistics uh, at the high school level. Um, and I do help out with FCA. I've been involved in ministry uh, since 2003, since I started teaching. Um, so yeah, for 17 years. Uh, and so I've helped out at different camps with FCA and of course I've helped out with different camps with you um, through the CP church and different organizations. Um, I have three kids, uh, Elijah, he's 13 and Kaylin, let's see, actually Lauren is uh, seven and Kaylin is six. So 13, seven and six. Uh, and I've been mar married to Amanda for uh, 17 years now. So, um, of course, we're high school sweethearts, and, <laughs> and uh, of course, me, Herschel, and Amanda, and we had all, all kinds of good friends in youth group. Um, we've known each other for a long, long time, and uh, so I consider Herschel to be like a brother to me. So yeah. I'm honored that you asked me to, to share some things. So Well, absolutely. And one of the things I would say is when we talk about how good of friends we are and what the stuff we've been through, like you live over by St. Louis. And when my dad was going through all of his um, transplant stuff, for those of you who don't, who are listening and have not heard my story, my dad has had a liver and kidney transplant. And it's, it was a long, long time in the hospital, almost a year. And you guys let me stay at your house all the time for nothing and didn't ask anything in return. And it was, you know, that's, that's the type of friends that we're talking about here. And we've been in, in a small group of guys together for 25 years. And I feel like all of us have helped each other grow in their faith. But yeah. well, I want, yeah. what we want to talk about today is um, faith in uncertain times. Um, so when I say uncertain times, what do you, what, and we say what uncertain times, what are we talking about here? Um, I say right now is an uncertain time for a lot of us um, with this, you know, COVID pandemic um, and, you know, just what to expect. I mean, you know, I think it's been a, it, obviously it's a, it's a terrible thing, but God can take, you know, terrible things and he can just make something beautiful out of it. And, and, um, and so for us, it's given us more family time together. Um, just so busy, you know, mm -hmm. with, with uh, going from sporting events, mainly, well, actually pretty much all of them, basketball, baseball, soccer, gymnastics, you name it, the kids are pretty much involved in it. Um, and, you know, I also help coach like upwards basketball and things like that. And um, like I said, with FCA and everything, we're just so busy. So I think all of us, I hope all of us have kind of taken a step back and kind of reevaluated you know, where we're at in this uncertain time with the pandemic and, you know, kind of reevaluated, is this really where God wants me? You know, am I really, you know, putting him first in my life? Um, and I hope we've all had a chance to kind of step back and think about that. Cause I feel like we have extra time now, you know, it's, oh, yeah. and it's, we, I think it's something that we pray for. It's like, 
God, I need, I need some more time. I need some extra time. And yep. look, he's like blessed this, like kind of in an indirect way, you know, we're getting these blessings. Um, and I think we're learning the value in things that we maybe devalued before. Yeah. Um, like actually going to church and mm. giving somebody a hug and mm. things like that, you know, we're getting a chance to reevaluate who we are and, and, and whose we are, you know, and that's, that's an important for me. But beyond that with uncertainty, um, some of the things I was thinking about in my life were, you know, times where maybe I was at a crossroad, you know, just like, God, like a big choice, you know, it's not, not a choice. Like, uh, what do we have for supper tonight? Which I don't know about you, Herschel, but sometimes that turns into world war three or oh, here. It can be the biggest fight of the day. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't care what we have. And, and she'll say, She'll say, oh, I don't care what we have. And I'll be like, how, how about this? No, that doesn't sound good. Yep. Really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you really don't care what we have, but you don't want, I don't want that. That doesn't sound good. Okay. Yep. All right. Anyways, not really talking about that. I'm thinking more of, um, you know, like I'm thinking back in times in my life where, you know, thinking about what do I want to, what school do I want to go to, mm. you know? And that was the thing, you know, um, what, do, do I want to major in? Who do I want to get married to? Mm -hmm. um, those things that we think maybe in our life are pivotal and that could have a big impact on the direction that we take. Um, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. Are there any like specific struggles um, that you and your family have been through that you're willing to share to talk about? Yeah. I mean, I kind of, talked about those just now a little bit as far as some of the things that I have thought were pivotal and key in, in my life. And um, so I'll just kind of give a little overview of my life, just a little story, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, Nothing, absolutely. Yeah. If I tell you my whole life, Herschel, we might be here for, you know, hours, but <laughs> just a short tidbit here, some things that I'm thinking of. And um, so I feel like I had a great upbringing and I had mm -hmm. awesome parents um, raise me in a Christian home. Um, you know, whenever I went off to college though, I kind of had to, you know, find my own faith. And, um, and so that was a, piv that was a pivotal time for me. And, you know, I had accountability groups, um, that just guys that just pushed me to be the best I could be in Christ. And, and I really started, you know, developing a faith in God at that point. Um, but, you know, I didn't really have any, um, uh, any friction or anything that came against me like it just seemed like life was going pretty well like, like I would plan something and the way I planned it it would work out that way mm -hmm. so um I only applied for one college and went to SIUE with Amanda and uh both went there and I was majoring in um computer engineering computer science and um I was like I want to do something with computers and it just my sophomore year just wasn't just wasn't going very well. Not my grades, just, I just didn't like it. And, mm -hmm. um, so I was talking to my mom about it and she's like, you know, um, you're good with kids and, and you know, you, you've always been good at math and maybe you should be a high school math teacher. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I didn't say that out loud because I mean, it's my mom. Right. I love her. I respect her. I was just thinking it. Like, what is this lady thinking? Like, I am not that great at speaking in front of people. Mm -hmm. Why would I choose a career? That's what I do every day. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I got off the phone with her and I was thinking, man, that was just a crazy idea. But I really started praying about it and, you know, seeking after God at that point. And I feel like at that moment, I was like really close to him because I was like, man, I got to trust in you, God, because you, you know, you see the future, you know, you know what's happening um you know what's gonna happen like you're you know, you're before time began you're at the end so um when i was in college i was a part of a group called csf christian student fellowships and um the leader tony jackson just a very awesome guy very wise and he said that you know god is just above time you know hmm. and and he said it's like um he said it's like a blanket um he said that you know, if you look at the underside of a blanket, you said you might see strings and threads going from here to there to everywhere. And, and you 
it just looks like chaos sometimes. And I feel like that's our life sometimes. Like I feel like it's chaotic and I don't understand what's happening. But from the other side, you know, you see this beautiful blanket that you see where all those threads went and, and mm. you see the end product. That's what God sees. You know, he sees this yeah. end product in me and, and I don't know a hundred percent what's going to happen in the end. You know, I, I do know though that we're going to be victorious in, in Christ, you know, mm. but all the little things that happen along the way. And I don't know, I don't understand all that. So, you know, I have to trust in God. And so I was kind of at that point, you know, where I was like, God, is this what you want me to do? I really felt like he was leading me strongly to pursue, you know, a degree in, in high school mathematics. So that's what I did. Um, and so that was, that was a big step for me to put my faith in him because mm -hmm. I really hadn't had opposition, I guess, prior to that too much. And then came, you know, a time, well, Amanda and I started dating our sophomore year in high school, you know, and I'd say that's whenever me and you probably started getting close as well yeah. um, with our youth group and, and all that. Um, so we're 15 years old, 16 years old, mm -hmm. you know, and um, just, just youngins. Um, but, you know, is this a person that I want to marry? You know, mm -hmm. is, is this God, is this who you want me to do life with? And, and so we started dating our sophomore year in high school. And, and, you know, of course, you know, we've had our ups and downs, like mm -hmm. any relationship, but um, and in college, you know, we just, we really kind of both sought out our own faith and um, did devotionals and things like that. We, this is kind of a side story, but, you know, like all couples, you know, of course, it's, you have boundaries, you know, that you set and as far as physical boundaries mm -hmm. and, you know, it's tough whenever you're off to college by yourself, you know, and not, but in high school and college, whatever, we actually decided, um, that we we're going to go a full year without kissing because we're just, I don't know if you remember me telling you that before or not, oh, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> so we're like, let's just try this. Let's just not kiss for a whole year. Uh, I think maybe that was our sophomore year, junior year. I can't remember which one in college. And, um, man, it was awesome because it was a time for us just to grow closer mm -hmm. together. Um, so anyways, that was a side note going back to our, I guess it was between our junior and senior year in college. I was like, God, is she the one? Cause it's probably about time to start popping that question, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was just, just hardcore, just seeking after that. And I, I really felt like God was saying, you know, that, that she is the one. And so we get married in 2003, things were going awesome. We um, move into an apartment. We're trying to save up money to pay off our college debt and all that. Um, we end up two years later buying a house. Things are going awesome. Like I said, we're just living the life. Um, we decide, well, you know, we have a house. Let's go ahead and start trying to have a kid. So we tried for about three months and then Amanda got pregnant. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we had Elijah in 2006 and just a huge blessing. You know, we side note, by the way, Elijah considers Herschel to be a brother from another mother. <laughs> um, that's what they kind of call each other. Um, but whenever Herschel is staying with us, you know, they they're really tight, you know, yeah. like, of course, Herschel's like my brother, but, you know, Elijah loves Herschel, you know, yeah, yeah. just, just like the brother. Um, we had a lot of quality time that year that I was <laughs> staying there pretty much. Yeah. A lot of, uh, laughter, a lot of good times mm -hmm. for sure. Um, should I tell the, the story her show where we were underwear? <laughs> <laughs> We'll move on from that. <laughs> oh, you don't want, okay. Um, okay, we don't have to tell that one. But I'll tell you real quick. Herschel came out of the shower and he thought that we were, that we didn't have any underwear on because <laughs> we pulled our shirts down over our shorts. And uh, so he's like, what kind of family is this? This was, this was the, like the, one of the first nights that I stayed with y'all. And I had no <laughs> idea what was going on. And, uh, it was what sold it was if it had just been you and Elijah, I would have been like, Oh, they're just being stupid. But what sold it is Amanda played along too. And I was like, wait a second, what, <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. And so anyway, <laughs> well, I know. I know. Um, you can edit that out later. Or something. Um, anyways. <laughs> so, you know, we have Elijah um, in 2006, things are just going awesome. And um, you know, we kind of wanted, 
three years between our kids. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I guess it was probably around 2009, 2010, somewhere in there, 2009, I guess we probably started trying to have Mm -hmm. another kid, maybe, well, yeah, it was probably, maybe actually 2008, we started trying, I think we started trying in 2008 and, um, it just wasn't going the way that we had planned. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were, I think we tried for about a year on our own to have a kid and we're like, how is this not happening? You know, with Elijah, it was just so quick and easy. And, you know, it was, it just happened the way we wanted it to happen. And it just wasn't happening like that this time. Mm-hmm. So um, it was about a year into it and we're like, this is just crazy. So we're like, well, what else can we do? So we started, you know, seeking the help of, of a doctor um, with uh what is in vitro, mm-hmm. in vitro, right? Simination. Um, is that what it's called? <laughs> in vitro simination. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. Uh, yeah. A fertility yeah. doctor. And, yeah, fertility doctor. Sorry. It's been a while. I've been out of the game for a while. <laughs> um, in vitro. That's what it was. And so we were seeking out help that way. And so we did did that for about a year or so and you know spent a lot of money and a lot of tears um because it just wasn't working either yep. and so then we started pursuing um again we're praying this whole time we're um you know we're just seeking after god it was a tough time for us but we were really i don't know seeking out god's help you know like it was just like god we need your guidance like what should we do you yeah. know and so it was a time where we even though it was so hard a lot of tears shed we drew closer together um mm-hmm. it was a time where um and we were so close during that time because we were just we were leaning on god and leaning on each other you know it's like it's like all we had it felt like so um well maybe another year or so later we was like hey maybe we should adopt amanda has a cousin that was adopted and they're super close and and we'd already kind of thought about that anyways, especially Amanda. She'd always wanted to adopt anyways. Um, we just didn't know it was going to come like this, you know. Like, right. Uh, so, so we decided that we would adopt, you know, after a lot of prayer. And, um, and so we, we did that. That was about a year process. And then, let's see, 2013, January 2nd of 2013, we, got, we adopted our first daughter. We had got a chance to bring her home born. Uh, like I said, she's seven. And, um, and then, which is a huge blessing. And then a couple years later, we got a call. Actually, it was, it was just a little over a year later, we got a call asking us if we wanted Lauren's biological sister, uh, Kaylin, which at that time, she didn't have a name, but uh, the Lauren's birth mom was pregnant, which we didn't know she was pregnant. And, um, and we found out that she was pregnant and they're like, well, would you like another baby? And we're like, yeah, that sounds awesome. They're like, well, we need to know by this afternoon. So, you know, if you could you figure like that three out. Or, three or four hours, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so we, it was a quick prayer, but we just felt so good about mm-hmm. it. You know, it was just like, we wanted them, we wanted the sisters to be together. Um, and so we're like, we just really felt like that was a God thing. And, and so we, you know, ended up, we have three kids. Um, we don't want to close that book, you know, it, right. we could end up having another one in some way. Um, but that was one time where we had to just trust. We just mm-hmm. had to trust in God that uh, even though we had shed so many tears and it, it was like, that. that's what we felt like sometimes like, God, where are you at? Like, you know, don't you want us happy? You know, don't you want to see these tires, you know, filled of us having another kid and, and after it gotten Lauren, we're like, he was with us the whole time, you know, and there's a lot more to the story than I'm able to share just for time reasons, but he was with us every step of the way. And, you know, that was, yeah. It sounds like to me, and I, and I know your story. I, I, you know, I remember all these things happening, like, but one thing I do remember is that you all did struggle but you did trust you know what I mean like you were sad like I remember I remember tears I remember the hurt and and everything but I also remember that 
you and Amanda both were so like steadfast in your, um, in your trusting in God during these difficult, uncertain events. And I wonder why do you think people struggle to put that trust into God? <coughs> I, know, I know for me, like I'm hard headed and I like to do things my own way. And, um, sometimes I don't like to ask people for help, Herschel. I yeah. don't know if you ever experienced that, but I just like to do things my own way. Um, and so, and you know that I, I'm a hard worker <coughs> and, you know, that's been part of my life. My parents were hard workers. Yep. Um, I've always worked hard and really given everything I have and, and can give at, at everything, my job and school. Whenever I go outside and do lawn work, I give my hundred percent best, you know, it's just, that's just how I was raised. Um, and so I want to do things myself, but we know that whenever it comes to sin, uh, whenever it comes to trying to be good enough, we can't, we can't do it on our own. Right. Um, and so, you know, God, we have to give that to God, <laughs> get, you know, give our sin, you know, give him every aspect of our life, put him first. Yeah. Um, that's not easy to do sometimes, you know, because we want to do things our own way. And when things don't happen, I was telling my story there, but things weren't happening on our time, you know, yeah. it, and we want things to happen on our time and on our terms. And when they don't happen like that, we freak out, or at least I freak out a little bit, you know, like, God, where are you? You know? Um, but that's, that's not what should happen. You know, God wants us to put our trust in him and his timing is the best. Yeah. And and whenever I look back, like whenever you're going through something difficult, it's in your face. Mm -hmm. And that's like all you can think about is the hardships that you're going through. But something that my pastor talks about is just take a step back. You know, like we talked about earlier with the COVID thing, take, we've taken a step back yeah. and take a step back and look at how God's blessed you. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I look at all the times that he's been faithful in my life, that's a reminder of how good he's <clears throat> been to me. And, um, and so, you know, whenever you go to talk to somebody about Jesus, they could, they could argue until they're blue in the face, you know, right. whether or not Jesus was a real person. If he walked right. the earth, if he died on the cross for your sins, all those things, but they can't really argue your story. And so, right. you know, I share just a part of my story and that's just who I am, but, you know, I just want to say that God was with me through all of that, you know, and so whenever I sit back and think about that and how he's blessed us, I know going forward that no matter what we go through, he's going to be there for us too, you yeah. know, like he's right there with us. His scripture confirms that and even just past experiences confirm that, you know. What, what scriptures would you like recommend right. to, to somebody who's struggling, like is there any off the top of your head that you would think of or? Yeah. Um, well, one that my pastor talks about, and this is more of a song and uh, the Rich Mullins song, Step by Step, mm. you know, that God directs, he directs our step, step by, like, sometimes you're just like, where do I go, God? What do I do? Take a step. Yeah. Take a step in faith and, and trust in him that he's going to lead he's going to open up certain doors that he's going to close other doors and take a step you know if you don't know what to do take a step in faith then you take the next step in faith and so you know that that song rich mullen song step by step step by step you'll lead me and i will follow you all my days like that mm -hmm. that resonates with me and that just pops in my head sometimes like god we trust you step by step no matter yeah. what we go through um just lead us lead and guide us um of course Jeremiah 29, 11, um, that's, that's been a big one for me, you know, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Um, to me that, like I said earlier, God is above time and he knows what's going to happen in the future mm. and, and not just what's going to happen. Like he, he wants to bless us so yeah. much. And so Part of the reason that we don't get blessed sometimes is because of the situations that we put ourselves in. And um, my pastor a lot talks about being in the blessed 
place. And that's whenever you're in a, you're in a place where you're, you're seeking after God, you're putting him first. Um, you're doing his will, you're giving him glory. And you're in that blessed, you're in that blessed place whenever you do that. And, you know, sometimes it feels like God's far away from us, but God hasn't moved. God, yeah. God's, God's constant. And that's been, that's been like awesome for me because, you know, if I feel like I'm far away from God, it's not because he's moved. It's because, you know, it's because of the choices that I've made. Um, and so he's that one constant in my life, regardless of what happens. Um, yeah. I think what I hear you say over and over in this conversation is that dis- in spite of our struggles and what we're going through, God remains the same. And that is why we can trust because God exactly. doesn't change. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I just think that's awesome. Let's say as we close out here, you have a guy who comes up to you and uh, he, he's like, you know, I am just, I'm struggling. I don't know what's going to happen um, with, you know, my wife is sick. I don't know what's going to happen. Can like, what would you say to encourage him? Some, something, something along those lines. It doesn't have to be sick, but just he's struggling. What would you say to encourage him? I would say to, to lean on God, to know that, that he is with you. He promises that, that he's with us through good times and bad, mm. that he upholds <laughs> us with his right hand. Um, to step back, to look at how he's blessed you in the past, like we talked about before. Um, to really find a good Christian brother um, or Christian sister, if you know if you're a girl, but um, a Christian brother that you can, that you can lean on. You know, yeah. I have you and I, and I have my brother and I've got these, these guys that, that are just rocks for me that if I ever am struggling with something or if I need to confess something, or if I am just, I'm at a crossroads, like we talked about before that, you know, that, that you can just open up to, you know, and, and that, you know, we sharpen each other, we make each other better. Yep. And so often as guys, we just want to keep it in and do it ourselves, but God didn't create us to, to do that. You know, like, even though that seems natural to do just to keep it bottled up and, yeah. and not share, that's not how God created us. And so I've been in many accountability groups and with different accountability partners through the years, and they have just sharpened me and made me a better person. So I think that's part of it, too, is just, you know, opening up, sharing where you're at with somebody, yeah. but just ultimately trusting in God that, that he's got the best planned out for you. Um, and his timing, like I said earlier, is is the best timing. Yeah. <clears throat> we well, think our timing is the best, but it's not. <laughs> right. Because because we know everything, right? Like in today's yeah. world. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's beautiful. I think that's awesome. Brad, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, no problem, man. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, man. Yeah. Hey, I love you a lot. And, love you too, and, man. Uh, tell your family I said hey. I will. <laughs> <laughs>